I'd call a meeting to order. Please rise for Pledge of Allegiance. The invocation tonight will be given by my pastor, Jonathan Schrod, from the Kirk of Holly Springs. Uh, welcome back, Pastor. From Nightdale, as I recall. Yes, I reside in Nightdale, but I joyfully and gladly uh, conduct my work here in Holly Springs. Good for you. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Mayor, Town Council, thank you for the privilege of opening uh, this meeting with an invocation. Pardon my casual attire, but I dress for the weather. <laughs> I don't blame you a bit. Let us pray. Sovereign Lord, for the beauty of today, we give you thanks. And for the gift of community, we are ever grateful. Guide us, O God in the deliberation of this community's business so that what is said and what is done and what is discerned may be pleasing in your sight. Help us to remember, O oh God, that it is true. It is right for us all as people of faith to abide by the laws of our government. O Lord, it is equally true that there are no laws that are just or right unless they are just and righteous before you. Help us, O God, as citizens and leaders alike, to discern and to know the difference. We pray. In the name of our Lord, amen. 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 <laughs> Thank you, Pastor. Item number four, adjustment approval of the June 19th, 2018 meeting agenda one day after our 58th anniversary. Oh, did I say that? Oh, is that what 58th anniversary? Did you wow. believe that? Wow. We were, we were married when we were both five. Mm -hmm. Never mind. <laughs> uh, Mayor Pro Tem. Guess there's no adjustments? I don't think so. We get there. There you go. A uh, motion to adopt the June 19th, 2018 meeting agenda with the following changes. There are none. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Item number five is a public comment period, and we have one signed up. We're going to open public comment, uh, comment period. Leroy Smith, our fire chief extraordinaire, or something like that. <laughs> Do I need to do the name and address thing? No, I think everybody knows you. Okay. <laughs> um, I wanted to thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak on such short notice tonight. Um, I, I would have had this on the agenda had it come together a little, little sooner. But I wanted to make everybody aware of a special event that's going to be going on tomorrow, a little short notice. Um, and it has to do with one of our residents here in Holly Springs. Um, Mrs. Martha, as she's known, but her real name is Martha Locklear Leach, will celebrate her 103rd birthday in July. Last year, I went to her birthday party, sort of unannounced. We took a fire truck and went over there and met. This is an extraordinary woman. Um, all she wanted to do was ride on the fire truck. Now, she has been, I think they told us she has par jumped out of an airplane, done parachuting, and a couple other things, but she really wanted to ride on the fire truck. So this year we're gonna make that happen. Um, so tomorrow at um, 10.30, 10.45, she's gonna be arriving at Fire Station One for a little bit of a birthday celebration. And then Tell around- me the time again, please. Uh, 10.45, and then around 11.30, we're gonna depart mm -hmm. the fire station and take her down Holly Springs Road, make a left on Main Street and a left on Earp. And we're gonna go up to Bass Lake and circle back through the, um, the shopping center and drop her at her house. But when we get on Earp Street, it's all bets are off. Lights, sirens, everything. She's gonna be able to, to <laughs> do, do all of that stuff. Um, but a little bit about her. She was born in Wagram, North Carolina. I think I said that correctly, W-A-G-R-A-M. 
um, and has lived in Holly Springs since 1948. Um, some of her favorite memories are the friendly people she's met throughout the town, and, and that's why she is still here. Um, the small town atmosphere is what she says she likes best about Holly, Holly Springs. So I did a little bit of digging. I'm kind of a history buff, and I wanted to see you know, what this lady may have experienced throughout her life. So I went back to 1915 to look at what a house cost. Single family house, 1915, $3,200. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> a car, $2,000. Let's see, a loaf of bread, seven cents. <laughs> Dozen eggs, 34 cents. A quart of milk, nine cents. A pound of steak, 26 cents. Just to give you a little bit of perspective on what this lady has seen, yeah. um, just to sit and speak with her is like a trip through the past and through history. I mean, she remembers a lot of stuff, and she'll tell you about anything that happened um, in, in the past if, if she's aware of it. Um, she's just an extraordinary lady. So I'd like to invite everybody that's here, if anybody may see this, to come out, line up on Herb Street, and just wave to this lady to recognize her 103 years, and then we'll have to figure out what we're going to do for year 104. <laughs> Excellent. So. Thank Chief, you. what time should they be out at Herb Street? Um, probably, if we leave the fire station around 11.30, probably somewhere between 11.30 and quarter of okay. 12. I know it's going to be hot, um, so we do have some news media that's going to be coming with right. us, so the time frame may get sped up or, or slowed down. Okay. But Is her house on Herb Street? Yes. That's what I thought. I, I, and according I, 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 to her, her house has moved. It used to be on another part of Raleigh Street or Herb Street, and they moved it a long time ago and put it there. So this is the house that she said that she's always lived in. It was just relocated. And it's kind of unusual because her address is sort of out of number with the way right. the house yes. addresses are on Herb Street. So that makes a lot of sense. I've met her. She's a trip. Yeah, her favorite color is red. So yeah. anybody wants to wave red at her, she, um, she loves that. And she had a ball last year with the firefighters. She thought them firefighters were the the stuff gave her red fire helmet and yeah <laughs> she couldn't get enough hugs i hear you thank, thank you, you chief. thanks thank you thank you chief at this point in time we'll close mm. the public comment period and go to gen item 6a request communication holly springs cdbg cooperation agreement 2019-2021 alicia arnold and kelly barondi i think it is am i correct close enough and welcome and you are? I'm Alicia. You're Alicia. Okay, Alicia. Welcome aboard from Wake County, right? Thank you. Uh, and does the mouse just drive the presentation? All right. Um, so I'm Alicia Arnold. I'm the Housing and Transportation Division Director at Wake County. And I just want to say uh, that's a really tough act to follow. Um, <laughs> uh, so I'll try, my, uh, try to do my best to be as entertaining. But uh, I, I also want to say thank you for having us here tonight. Um, so we're here to discuss the Town of Holly Springs uh, uh, joining the Wake County Cooperation Agreement and Municipal Partnership for the CDBG Urban County Entitlement. So Wake County became an urban county entitlement back in 1992, and what this allowed us to do was to receive federal funds through the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. As of this year, we received just over $3.5 million in funding through four different sources of grants. And this cooperation agreement with the town allows the county to administer our grants within the town's jurisdiction. The grants are calculated using a statutory formula, so it's, a, it's an allocation that's based off of population, community needs, poverty, housing overcrowding, housing age, and population growth. <clears throat> so the four grants that we receive through this entitlement are the Community Development Block Grant, or CDBG, and that allows us to do housing and community development activities for low-income families and in low-income neighborhoods. We also receive the Home Investment Partnership Program Grant, which we call HOME, and that allows us to develop affordable housing and also to provide rental assistance, and we provide our rental assistance to youth who are aging out of foster care. We also receive the Housing Opportunities for Persons with AIDS grants, or what we call HOPWA, and this allows us to provide housing and related supportive services for persons with HIV or AIDS. Uh, we utilize this for rental assistance uh, as well as supportive services to help people uh, that may be experiencing uh, uh, income uh, instability due to their health be able to maintain their housing. 
And then our most recent grant that we received through this entitlement funding is the Emergency Solutions Grant, or we call it ESG. And this allows us to assist individuals and family through uh, that are experiencing homelessness or at risk of experiencing homelessness uh, to receive what we call rapid rehousing or housing prevention that allows them to maintain stability in their home or to be rapidly rehoused back into a permanent housing situation. And so some of the benefits of the partnership that Holly Springs will, will gain with Wake County um, is that residents will have access to several of our programs that we administer through these four grants. We administer an elderly and disabled uh, rehabilitation grant program where you can receive up to $20,000 for repairs on your home to help uh, their home in a safe and healthy manner. We also have an emergency grant program that helps to uh, helps individuals uh, deal with unexpected repairs like a roof replacement or an HVAC that, that goes out. We partner with other municipalities and we'll be able to partner with Holly Springs on public facilities projects. And so these are infrastructure projects that help to benefit low-income neighborhoods. And some examples of what we've done have been sidewalks, street paving, spray grounds, parks, uh, and, and that. We also, it also opens up funding available for affordable housing development, uh, both rental housing as well as uh, home ownership opportunities. And then again, rental assistance, similar to the rental assistance that we provide uh, for those that are experiencing health care concerns or uh, for those who are aging out of the foster care system. The other benefit to this is that the administration and the compliance is performed solely by the county. Um, so we're responsible for ensuring that the grants are complied with, that we're meeting all the fe federal regulations, and our staff help to administer uh, the grants to the residents of Holly Springs. We have about 25 residents that we receive calls from each year that we're unable to help currently because Holly Springs is not in this cooperation agreement. Uh, so we know that the demand is there for those residents to be served through this funding. Just in last fiscal year, we were able to complete 36 grants uh, through our elderly and disabled in our emergency grant program. Uh, and that was an investment of just under half a million dollars in our participating jurisdictions. We also just recently passed our 20-year comprehensive affordable housing plan, as well as our additional funding in this year's budget of $15 million for affordable housing projects. Uh, and we want to utilize this funding to help towns navigate the current affordable housing uh, concerns that we have in many areas. The county also anticipates with the joining of Holly Springs that uh, appropriation formulas will be increased as Holly Springs population and other statistics will be uh, included in our allocation. Uh, so that is also a benefit to us. So I'm happy to answer any questions you may have at this time. What kind of calls do you get? Can you kind of give me an idea of the type of person that calls in the situation? Sure. So a lot of the calls we receive are um, for calls that would qualify under our emergency grant program, but then when we start to investigate, so somebody may call about a roof that's leaking um, or an HVA system that's gone out, but then when we send our contractor out there, we discover that there's more concern. So maybe they haven't had their bathroom retrofitted so that they're able to access it safely. They need, they need bars in their tub or um, they may need a, a tub instead of a shower. Mm -hmm. um, or that, you know, their floors may be sagging, so we may need to do some uh, adjustments there, um, or even build ramps for individuals. So a whole host of things. Um, we've done well repairs. We've done water line repairs. Um, oh, wow. All of the above. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Wow. Other questions or comments? The 330000 is that per year, and is that a grant to every participating agency that they get each year, or is it need-based or some sort of requirement to meet that? So the way we've operated in uh, the past five years is that uh, all of our towns met and um, decided which projects they wanted to go after. And each town was allowed two allocations of 330000 um, and they could decide which projects they wanted to spend those on. And so it was a combination of a bunch of little projects for some folks or it was a big project um, uh, for, for others. So an example is uh, this year is Apex's turn, and they'll be utilizing their 330000 on their Pleasant Park project. Um, uh, but so some towns uh, have had funding several years in the past five years because they've used small amounts, and other towns have just had one large funding. How do residents become aware of the services that you provide? Sure. So we have them on the Wake County website. 
Um, we also have brochures and, and attend many um, community uh, activities where we can pass out brochures as, uh, uh, as well as um, have our information on. Uh, Wake County has a network of care site that has a whole host of information. So when somebody may be looking for um, health services, they can also access and see our housing services we offer also. Um, and we're happy to, to come to any events or, or share any information, provide brochures in any municipalities, town halls also. Could we get some brochures? Absolutely. Thank you. I know a place to put them. Other questions or comments? There's some language in the contract about the county having the authority to conduct and oversee the types of projects that get completed within the participating agencies. It's my understanding that those projects would still have to go through our development review process and everything. So I just wanted to confirm that and make sure that was the case. Absolutely. So we get to decide which types of activities of all the eligible activities that the county wants to participate in as a whole. Um, so say rehabilitation activity. Uh, it still must comply with all your permitting, still complies with all of your zoning, your land use policies. Um, we don't get to come in and do anything without complying with municipal jurisdiction on any of those things. Okay. Other questions or comments? I'm just wondering how do we consider entering into this agreement? What's, what's the next step? I think the next step is we're going to make a motion. Okay. Yes? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Any other questions, though? If not, thank you, Alicia. Thank you. We do have a motion. Who wants to hit it? Motion to enter into cooperation agreement with Wake County Partnership for CDBG programs. Second. Motion has been made and second on favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you, Alicia and Kelly. Thank you very much for coming. Appreciate it. Yes, thank you. Stay cool. Agenda item 7A, public hearing 17-016, System Development Fee Study, Kendra Parrish. Good evening. Good evening. So you might recall a few meetings ago, um, we uh, put our report out for public comment. And this is the report as a result of House Bill 436, where um, all municipalities in North Carolina had to go through and do an analysis for the system development fees, which are our water and sewer capacity fees. Um, as you may recall, these fees are charged at the time of building permits, and it's fees that are paid by the development community for, for new uh, units. Um, so we've completed the report. It was a, um, we hired Friesen Nichols to do an independent engineering study, and we've had that out for 45 days with no comments. And so I'm going to ask Charles Archer with Friesen Nichols to come up and hit the highlights of the study, and we can answer any questions that you may have. And then the motion before you tonight is to approve the study or receive the study, and then in our next, um, the budget ordinance, these fees would be um, part of the fees that are adopted in the budget. Okay. Okay. Thank and you. I'll ask Charles Archer to come up. Welcome, Charles. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Kendra. Good evening, Mayor, members evening. of Council. Uh, as Kendra said, I'm Charles Archer with Friesen Nichols, Mr. Manager, Mr. Attorney. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here this evening. Uh, we appreciate this opportunity to continue to work with the town of Holly Springs um, and really enjoyed working with your staff and doing this analysis for system development fees. As uh, was stated previously, this is a new law that was adopted by the General Assembly last summer, and it's essentially replacing what were different towns and cities and utility systems had different names for it, but capacity fees, impact fees, um, all types of different names for it, but it's replacing that. Um, and the model that's in this legislation, or this law, that's now law, is based upon the American Water Works Association model that they've developed that's used uh, nationwide in a lot of instances. And it's actually, uh, our company originated in the state of Texas, and there was a lawsuit in the 1980s um, a similar one that happened here in North Carolina a couple years ago that prompted the Texas General Assembly to adopt a, a law you know, back in the, what, 1988, I believe it was. So we've done a number of those analysis, system development fee analysis in Texas, and we've done a number here in North Carolina. So, it, so we appreciate the opportunity to work with you all on this. So what is a system development fee? The law defines it as it's a charge or an assessment for service and 
imposed with respect to new development. So as new uh, residential and non-residential development occurs that may require the cost of capital improvements for water and wastewater only, it's, it's a process in which to, to recover some of those costs associated with that new development. Um, the, it is a process that has to be done every five years. The town is required to have this analysis done at least every five years. You can do it more often if you feel the need. And probably the only reason that the town would need to do it more often is if some capital project popped up that's new that would affect the calculations and the analysis. You may want to revisit that. Uh, but again, that's something you have to keep an eye on each year as you do your capital improvements program. One of the key things that this law did prior to what the old law did not do is it standardizes the process. So you're doing the same process that Cary, Apex, Raleigh, everybody has to do the same process now across North Carolina and, and doing these analyses. If you do choose to adopt these fees, you can begin charging them October 1 of this year. Um, and the law provides for three methods in which how we do these calculations. One is called the buy-in method. And that's where you have existing capacity in your water system or wastewater system and your the new development's buying that capacity that's available. So that's one method of doing the analysis. The second is called incremental or marginal. And that's where you have new development that causes the need for expansion of your existing system for it to be able to, to happen, to occur. And then the third method that the law provides for is a combination of those two. And we, uh, after doing the analysis, determined that the combination method was the best for the town of Holly Springs when we did this. As when we get into doing the analysis, we have to look at population projections, land use assumptions, water demands, wastewater demands, and the capital projects that are needed to meet the growing population within the planning period. The law allows systems to, to do the planning period between 10 and 20 years. Uh, we elected the 20 year uh, uh, planning period for Holly Springs. And at the end of the day, what we discovered was that uh, the town has, in the next 20 years, um, a total of capital needs in 80, $89.2 million just for water system improvements to meet the growing demands of the new development in Holly Springs. I should, should have said earlier that the only, you can't count all the costs, it's only the cost that is attributable to the new development. Um, so, so we have $89.2 million worth of water capital projects within the next 20 years anticipated to serve new development in Holly Springs. On the wastewater side, we identified $82.3 million in capital projects. So that's a total of $171.6 million in capital needs that the town will have for water and wastewater in the next 10 years. That's a lot of money. Um, so we do all the calculation, end of the day, um, the, the fee, the maximum allowable system development fee that the town can charge per equivalent residential unit, which is a single family home. And there's a multiplier in there for, for larger meters, like for uh, large commercial users and industrial users. For water, it's $4,054. For wastewater, it's $3,741. It's combined, it's $7,795. That also includes a required minimum 25% discount that the statute requires. We do the calculations, you have to take at least 25% off the top before you can de determine the fee. The reason that is required is that required is there's an assumption that the ratepayers, everybody in their water bill, they're paying some share of the capital cost for the projects that have, have taken place and will be taking place. As part of that's borne by your water and wastewater users in town. And this is, that's the reason for the 25% uh, required credit. Um, as uh, Kendra stated, the 45 day comment, public comment period that has to be, the, this is posted on your website. A special email address was provided for, for folks to comment and no comments were received during the 45 day period. And so the public hearing that you're having this evening happens after that. Mm. So that's a real quick overview of the system development fee process and the study for Holly Springs. And if you do have questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Questions or comments? Okay, good. No. Good. Has, there, has there been any 
uh, comments from developers or the development uh, community as far as these fees go? Have they been? I'm not aware of any comments. I haven't heard anything. And it was a reduction. It was 9,500, and it's gone down. And so yeah, maybe that's the reason we haven't seen mm -hmm. a lot of comments. Mm -hmm. Anything else for Charles? All well, good. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Charles. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. There's the motion. Anything else, Kendra? Can we open the public hearing up? Oh, that would be good. Yeah, we're going to do that. At this point in time, we're going to open the public hearing. There are no one signed up, so we'll close the public hearing. And back to Kendra. Anything else? Okay. Final title motion. Motion to approve the development fee report prepared for the town and to incorporate the resulting water and sewer capacity fee structure into the town's operating budget. Second. Motion been made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Charles. Agenda item 7B, public hearing FY 2018-19 budget. Daniel Weeks, interim town manager, and one of my favorite subjects of the budget. Good evening, Mayor and Town Council. We are getting very close to what we in local government like to call the other New Year's Eve, where our, where our uh, fiscal <laughs> year will, will end on June 30th. Our, of course, our fiscal year runs July 1 to June 30. So it's that time of year where we uh, approve our next year's operating budget. So that's what we are here for tonight to uh, request your, your approval. So I'm going to be advancing these slides. Okay, um, just first of all, I wanted to acknowledge uh, a number of staff members that have been instrumental in creating this budget. Um, you can see on the screen, Mary Hogan, Pat, uh, Patty Dressen, and Tammy Sigafoos from our finance department, uh, a few of which are in the crowd tonight. Yep. Kendra Parrish, Kimberly Keyes, uh, all department heads and their senior staff members who help with the budget development. Of course, uh, former town manager Chuck Simmons. Well, we'll give him a little bit of credit, you know. He, he, <laughs> Not he, much. He was here little. for part of it, so. <laughs> and then that, that last, the last guy there, too. Mm. Um, budget calendar, uh, I definitely won't go through this in detail. Just wanted you to, to get a sense for how long the budget process does take. This, this is a formal, formal process, uh, usually takes roughly five months. It begins with the distribution of budgetary information to departments who in turn then complete year-end estimates for the current year. We typically hold our first public hearing in March, which we did this year. Uh, departmental budget meetings take place throughout the month of April. And we typically have uh, a budget workshop with the town, town council and staff like we did this current year at the law enforcement center in May. Yep. And that all cul uh, culminates in where we're at tonight with our second public hearing and uh, hopeful approval of the FY 1819 operating budget. Two small changes that that we would we're re requesting uh, that be made tonight uh, in your motion, if, if you so choose to approve this budget, that aren't reflected in your. Uh, agenda packets on the Dropbox. These are very minor. Uh, they just they came to light as we're scanning the document. One of them is simply it's on page 38. Uh, it's changing the 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 wording two and one half percent to the two percent that that was agreed upon. Um, I told finance that that was a nice try to you know slip 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 that one in there, but you know they got, they got called. So that, that that will that will be a two percent market adjustment. For, for, for the staff next year. And then on page 121, there is a current fee in the planning department for development plan for multifamily or development options. That fee is currently $1,500. It made its way into this budget at $1,200. We are just proposing to keep that constant at $1,500. So at the end of this, during the motion, help me remember, we would like to make a motion to approve the operating budget with these with these two changes <clears throat> tax base growth and ad valorem taxes of course ad valorem taxes are a huge part of our annual operating budget um, we get our projections from wake county 
And uh, as, as in years past, we, we base our tax collection numbers off of a 99% collection rate, which is, which is very strong, uh, at an approximate tax base of just over $4.6 billion, uh, keeping the tax rate where it is, 43.25 cent per $100 valuation. And then we just placed uh, the last few years of, of tax base uh, numbers in here. So the first five are actuals, and then the 2018-19 is an estimate. Typically that estimate, it, it comes from Wake County. Typically it's low. Uh, as the year goes on, that, that, that will rise. But as you can see, we're, we're steadily mm -hmm. making our way up to the, to the $5 billion mark. Okay, so some of, the, some of this information you've, you've seen before at the budget workshop, but I'll, I'll just quickly go, go through it once again. Uh, no change to the tax rate, no change to any of the solid waste fees. They, they remain the same for garbage, recycling, and yard waste. No appropriation from fund balance or no new financing was proposed in this, in this budget. And the nonprofit contributions, which uh, are listed here, the $30,000 to the Holly Springs Chamber of Commerce is, is the same as what, what we've done for the past few years and the $15,000 as the town council desires to distribute to, uh, to nonprofits, which um, I believe you did at the last meeting. New positions, um, at the budget workshop we, we began with 17. During that workshop we added uh, two police cadets for, you know, for reasons we talked about there at the workshop. So this is the total um, general fund new position list, 19 new positions. Um, two public works technicians in the streets division, one assistant fire chief, three fire engineers, one budget analyst, one assistant town attorney, four police officers, two police cadets, two telecommunicators, one associate planner, one lead park maintenance technician in Parks and Rec, and one transportation engineer for the, for the 19 new positions. Okay, capital outlay on the general fund side. Prob most people probably can't read this. There's actually two slides worth of, of capital in the general fund, but um, you can obviously find this in the budget document. Uh, the total on the general fund side is, is just shy of $2 million. Um, some, some of the highlights in here include wayfinding signage around town and, and in the village district. Uh, this is where our vehicles show up that we buy for new police officers and uh, just, just new, new vehicles that are needed in our fleet as old ones ret get retired. Cameras at our parks, facilities, uh, radio replacements for, for public safety and and um, public works personnel. Uh, there's a new leaf truck in this, in this budget, if you remember from the budget workshop. Uh, theater equipment at the cultural center. So all those types of, of capital items are included in that $1.9 million. Now, that, that is just the second, second page there. Other items planned for next year and accounted for that aren't, some of these aren't really capital, so we just wanted to list them out separately. Um, community development software implementation. This is, um, this is go, we're going out for an RFP. We've received bids now, but uh, integrating a new community software that would tie in engineering, planning, code enforcement, all into one, one software package. Um, Tree City USA program. Our planning department will, will lead the effort in um, getting Holly Springs uh, approved in that program. One of the requirements we just wanted to mention was having a certified arborist on board, which, which we do, and he's located in our Parks and Rec department. His name is Taylor Jackson, and he's already helped us out a couple times here recently. Future land use plan, which, which you're, you're fully aware of. Um, that's $100,000, and again, that, that'll be led by our planning department. Uh, we have public works facility design 
Uh, we have $350,000 allocated in this budget should we decide to go forward with a design for, for that facility. And it does not have a financial implication in this budget, but we did decide that the council decided to uh, go forward with the ladder truck contract in the fire department. Uh, we would move forward with design and construction, but there would be no financial impact until next fiscal year, FY 1920. This is this chart's just an overview of how our general fund revenues and expenditures are are um, are carried out. Uh, as you can see there, in under revenues, ad valorem taxes and the other taxes and licenses. That's mainly state shared revenues. They equal together over seventy five percent of our general fund revenues. So those, those two sources are are really really important. And then down below, you can see how we how the budget uh, spends the spends those monies, um, general government, debt service, development, and so on down the list. <clears throat> general fund uh, debt to expenditures ratio. This is this is a stat that we like to, to share each year, um, and it's it's. It is exactly what it says. It is our general fund debt to the $38 million that you saw in the, in the previous slide, our total expenditures. Uh, over the last five years, we you can see we've been in a downward trend. Um, five years ago, we were at 17.1% for, for that ratio. Now we're at 11.8%. So we're, we're moving in a, in a positive direction. Okay, moving to the utility fund side um, of the ledger, water and sewer rates. There's no increase to the to the access fee. It's currently twelve fifty for water and twelve fifty for sewer. That remains the same. The one increase that we are proposing in this budget is a two point six eight percent increase in user rates per the Federal Bureau of Labor uh, standards. Uh, they, we looked at a um, March 2017 to March 2018 time period, and the average increase for, for water and sewer services was 2.68. So that, that's what we are requesting just to keep up with our increased cost to provide those services. Um, we wanted to double check and see how that, that increase would, would, be, would be felt by you know, the average homeowner. So we, we always look to the UNC Environmental Finance Center. They have a dashboard where you can compare yourself to all other uh, utility systems in the state. Our current average monthly bill uh, for water and sewer services, and that's at 5,000 gallons a month usage, is $68.62. With a 2.68% increase, that would, that would, uh, your bill would increase by about $1.17 a month. The 2.68% increase isn't applied to that total number because some part of that number includes the access fee, so it's just the rate portion, if you try to do the math uh, yourself. Um, so it's a $1.17 um, cent increase, and our 100-mile average bill is $74.56, 50-mile average $78.25. So you see we're, we're still considerably below the 50 and 100 mile average for all utilities. But the maps to the right just indicate those, those different utilities. Um, on the utility fund side, no appropriation from fund balance or again, no additional financing proposed. And this slide represents the capital outlay items for the, uh, for the utility fund side. They total $1.8 million. And the most significant one on this list is obviously the fixed network. Uh, it is a fixed network satellite read utility system that our finance department would oversee implementing. Uh, it would allow for you know remote reading of of um, of our our meters in town. Uh, we we would be able to not we would not have to drive around to do that. We would be able to place units on top of our uh, our water towers to read those meters. We could get real-time data 
uh, the, the, the homeowner could get real-time data. They could, they could detect leaks, you know, before they get a bill in the mail. Um, there, there's a lot of positive attributes of, that, of this program. And they would be able to pay, you know, pay their pay their monthly bill and so on with this with this new new software. Uh, only two new positions on the utility fund side, and they are both in the public works uh, department on the collections on the collections division. Here's the same pie graphs for the utility fund side. Um, no surprise, most of our our revenue comes from water sales and wastewater sales. And you can see the expenses down, down below. Wastewater, 38%, water, 17%, and so on. That service, 24%. Just a couple other uh, budgetary highlights. There's a market adjustment based on the uh, CPI of 2%, uh, merit performance pay of up to 3%, and that's based on each employee's annual evaluation. You can get up to 3%. Uh, 401k contribution at 5%, longevity benefit, and state mandated retirement benefit. You can, you can see the numbers here, 7.81% for town employees, not non-police. And the police, they have a great lobbying group, so that they actually get a little bit more uh, in their, in their uh, <laughs> retirement benefit. Uh, and then health, employee health insurance. Uh, a lot of credit goes to our human resources department. They they help negotiate this this rate, and we're only looking at a 1.9 percent rate increase. Um, I've talked to a, a couple other managers in Wake County, and I won't mention names, but they that they look at double digit increases. So that this is this is pretty pretty good. That is that is all I had for the kind of the overview of the budget, and I will say. All of the items that we talked about at the budget workshop that we all agreed on, I believe finance sent out the list later, they've all been incorporated in, in, into this budget. Do you want to touch on the uh, two additional uh, public works techs? That's a program that I'm kind of excited about, why we're going to do it. I see Lindsay's back here, so I wanted to mention that again. So go sure. ahead. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I can I, I can share something, and if Luncey wants to chime in, he can. Um, <laughs> the 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 two the two new positions on the street side. Their primary focus will be street tree maintenance, um, trimming, trimming, look, look, looking out for street trees that could be diseased or dead. Seeking advice from our certified arborist. If you know, if I, I know in, in Sunset Oaks a few years ago where I live, we had. Um, I think you call them oak worms, yellow striped oak worms, and they yeah. were they were devastating some of the trees. So uh, th th these this crew would would be on the lookout for those types of things, trim trees around street lights, and so on. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions of Daniel before we open up like hearing any more questions or comments? One of the Go thing. Go ahead. One of the things I was thinking about um, in the capital purchases. It's, I think in the in the past it's kind of been like July one we open the floodgates and everybody goes out and whatever's approved, we buy it up. And most, most of the big banks that hold mortgages out there pay their property taxes like September, October timeframe. So the, the biggest time that we have an influx of cash is later in early fall-ish around then. You know, maybe it makes sense, you know, I know Mary's not here, but if you can relay this, but maybe just think about, I don't know if it's for this year or next year, but how can we gate some of those purchases if we don't need 20 trucks on July 1? Let's kind of sparse them out throughout the year when we need them replace them as those needs come up um, and sort of just improve the cash management. I think it helps that way we don't have a big outflow, you know, before we get most of our revenues in later in the year. Um, just something I was thinking about. Okay. Thank you. I, I will. I, I will relay that to Mary and Patty and Tina. Are there questions or comments at this point? Been down there before mm -hmm. a couple times. If not, we'll open a public hearing and again, uh, no one has signed up, so we'll close the public hearing and continue on with further discussion and or motion. Oh, and by the way, there was one more thing. Uh, last night, yeah, it was last night, the Wake County Mayor Association met, and we meet once a month and talk about, and one of the things that several of us brought up is how many of you are raising taxes and how many of you are keeping it safe? Uh, we're, again, keeping it the same as you just heard. Uh, there are several who are raising taxes, so I commend the town for keeping the uh, tax rates the same. 
Anything else? I'll um, make, yeah. I'll make the motion to adopt ordinance 1806, adopting the FY 2018-19 town budget with the clerical corrections that were stated uh, earlier in the presentation. Second. Motion made and second in all favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously and thank you very much. Agenda item 7C, public hearing 18, Mayor, REZ04, Mayor, business Mayor, park. Mayor, 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 excuse, excuse, I'm, I'm sorry, well, what, there's one other motion to set the water and sewer rates. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yep, sorry about that. I'll, I'll make the motion to adopt the ordinance 18-07, setting the water and sewer rates for fiscal year 2018-19. Second. Motion made and second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Now back to... 7C, public hearing, 18 REZ 04, Business Park, Town-Owned Parcels, Melissa Sigmund. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank Good you. Um, as noted, the rezoning case before you this evening is for, it's a town-initiated rezoning uh, for town-owned parcel, uh, parcels. Um, and this is really a cleanup effort, similar to um, what you heard a few meetings ago. Yep. Uh, so in this case, you can see the request is to modify the zoning of approximately 4.52 acres of town-owned property split over five parcels. Um, the properties are currently zoned a variety of designations, including R30, R10, uh, planned unit development, and we're looking to uh, go to a zoning of research and technology, RT. <clears throat> The map here shows you um, that the parcels are located throughout the northern portion of the business park, um, primarily the areas that have not yet developed. And this request um, will remove unnecessary setbacks and regulations that occur when we have uh, a zoning, or zoning districts that are different. So if we have a residential zoning adjacent to um, the uh, research and technology district, you have a difference in standards that occur and um, the really just a disconnect between the zoning of the majority area or the uh, future development potential and these small remnant parcels. The parcels that we have here are undeveloped and vacant with the exception of the reclaimed water tower uh, located on the parcel um, to the east. So the existing zoning in this area currently varies um, with the central properties not having yet been rezoned uh, for development with the business park um, plan. Uh, the goal is to really front load this process and to accommodate future adjacent development, um, as I said, creating seamless standards so that um, the appropriate business park uses can be accommodated. It's anticipated that there would be future rezoning requests for um, other properties in this area um, on the privately owned parcels, although um, there are none being brought forward by the town at this time. The map here shows you the future uh, land use plan for the area, which does, the large blue area is all of the, the business park designation. So this is, the proposed rezoning is consistent with the future land use plan that shows the entire uh, entirety of the blue area for future business park development. Um, this is consistent with the, the land use plan in that it does identify properties for industrial development and facilitates orderly uh, development in the area. As I mentioned, there's no specific development proposed for um, these specific parcels, uh, although, as I mentioned, we do expect that it would allow adjacent development to occur um, in an appropriate fashion. Planning Board did recommend approval of uh, the proposed rezoning 900. Uh, I don't know that we have our planning board representative av available. We, we do. He's oh, great. There. Excellent. Um, there, so if, if, if he is available, um, if you have any questions regarding the planning board's discussion, although it was minimal in nature. Any questions on that? No. Good? I think we're good. Thank you. Motion to accept the statements of capability contained in agenda packets that the requested rezoning is consistent with the Vision Holly Springs Comprehensive Plan. Second. Before I say anything, I open and close the public hearing because, again, no one signed up. So uh, motion has been made, one of two. It's been seconded in all favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously, number two. 
Motion to adopt ordinance 18-REZ-04, changing the zoning of 4.52 acres of town-owned land from PUD, R10, and R30 to RT Research and Technology. Second. Second. Motion made. Second. All favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. Tonight, I'm 7D public hearing. This is from the testimony Triangle Wine Company, Sean Ryan. Hi, Sean. Hello. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Uh, this item on the agenda is a request for a special exception use for Triangle Wine Company, uh, a proposed tenant at the Holly Lakes at Sunset Lake Commons Shopping Center, which is under construction uh, along Sunset Lake Road, south of the intersection with Holly Springs Road, uh, located the parcel highlighted in gray on the screen. The special exception use request before you tonight is to allow for a 250 square foot bar area uh, in the local business zoning district. This is similar to uh, the previous one we had a couple weeks ago for uh, the Black Dog Bottle Shop uh, just north uh, of here. Um, and, and I say bar, but it's very loosely a bar. Um, it is more like a, a tasting, uh, tasting counter at, at the uh, business location. However, our ordinance does define that as a bar. Um, and when adjacent to residential zoning districts, like the local business zoning district normally is, uh, it gives the public and adjacent <laughs> property owners the opportunity to come and voice any concerns that they may have uh, with this use being located in close proximity to them. Uh, this is the site plan for the Holly Lakes Shopping Center. Uh, we have Sunset Lake Road along the bottom of the screen here. Uh, and this is the new Lassiter Road extension. Uh, if you remember last meeting, we were dealing with the uh, main building elevation changes. That's this building here. Uh, but this tenant is in Unit K, which is on the smaller shops building here. Uh, the adjacent property <coughs> immediately behind this building is a residentially zoned piece of property. Uh, however, we do anticipate that if this property were to redevelop, it would redevelop in a uh, commercial nature similar to uh, what is surrounding it with the Holly Lakes Shopping Center. Uh, parking was already accounted for in the shopping center for the 250 square foot bar area, uh, so they are meeting all of their parking requirements. Uh, the planning board did review this last month. Uh, they did vote uh, to recommend approval, 9-0. Uh, if you'd like, we can have our planning board representative come up and, and discuss this. Uh, Chris DeSager is here tonight uh, for Sean McGrath. Okay. Any questions to the planning board? What's up? I don't have any questions. No. I think we're good. Again, thank you, Sean. Before right. we do that, again, we'll open and close the uh, public hearing. No one signed up. Any further discussion before the motion? Mayor, I did have somebody ask me if the, um, the Triangle Wine Company was planning to bring in food trucks, and if they did that, how would you deal with where they would be? I don't know. I don't remember the planning board discussing that. The planning board did not discuss that. Uh, the applicant is here tonight, so I would probably defer that question to him uh, as to whether or not they're going to have them. Um, from a, a zoning standpoint, we do have a method to allow them. They would have to uh, have a temporary use permit for their food trucks uh, that is limited to um, a certain number of days and certain number of occurrences per year, so it would not be something that they could do um, every Friday, uh, it, it would be limited to only a few days a year, likely. Is that, uh, be but is that because it's an integrated center, or do those same, those same permits apply to any other business in, in town? So the town doesn't have any specific ordinances that address food trucks themselves. Um, but once you move on to private property, we do allow for food vendors on a temporary basis. So that's what we've been classifying food trucks as. And so those... Uh, limits are, uh, they're, they're the same whether you're a food truck or you're setting up just a, a table selling produce like a, a small farmer's market. Um, so it does apply to every other commercial center as well. I mean, that would be up to the property manager to allow that. So I guess, yeah. I mean, would you, want to, the, would you like to hear ones. from the applicant on that one? Yeah. Okay. okay. Please give us your name and address, please. Uh, Daniel Brown, 2116 Rolling Rock Road, Wake Forest. I've been told I'm supposed to say that I've been sworn in, too, in the event that you have any questions. I had no idea what you just asked. I'm sorry. We'll do it again. 
I was just asking about, um, did you have any plans for bringing food trucks? And if you did, had you talked to the town about where they would be or? Uh, no, we have not uh, heard that request made by the tenant. It's not contemplated in our lease. Okay. We would welcome it to the extent that it doesn't compete with restaurants that we have there. So we have to be kind of careful to balance that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But generally, we would be in favor of it if it, you know, if it works out. Okay. Other questions? That mm -hmm. All good? Thanks, sir. Thank you. Anything else, Sean? No. Um, so for this special uh, exception, you, is it, you term it loosely as a, as a tasting bar. Mm -hmm. Should the owners change their mind or new owners come, come in, does this SEU allow for a more fuller bar, uh, that typically what we would think is, as a bar? So in their findings of fact, they have limited their area of bar to 250 square feet. Uh, so the, the special exception use uh, that you would be deciding on is specific to this unit and it is specific to that square area. So um, if this company moved out and another company moved in, they would be held to the same special exception use requirement. So, um, you know, another unit next door couldn't come in and, and open a bar and say, well, you gave it to this unit. They would have to come in for their own special exception use. Um, and if they moved in, they wouldn't be able to have more than 250 square feet. And that's wine, hard alcohol, beer, it would be any bar use, correct? Yeah. Okay. From a zoning standpoint, it's any bar use, but for to sell um, under the ABC laws to sell mixed drinks, you have to either be a private club or provide food. Food. Yeah. So yeah, I wouldn't think that they're going to be doing yeah. tequila shots there. Okay. Good answer. Thank you. The, the 250 square feet is our ordinance, right, that restricts it to that in that district, or that's just what they claimed as their statement of fact, it could be any square footage? That is correct. Our ordinance does not have a limit on the square footage. Anything else? Nope. Mm -mm. Looking good? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Two motions. Number one. I'll make the motion, I'm sorry, motion to make and accept the findings of fact to be recorded in the minutes for a special exception use petition 18-SEU04 for Triangle Wine Company to allow for a bar in the LB district at 4204 Lassiter Road. Second. Motion made the second in all favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously number two. Having made the necessary findings of fact, motion to approve special exception use 18 SEU 04 for Triangle Wine Company to allow for a bar in the LB district at 4204 Lassiter Road with the conditions listed in the agenda packets. Second. Motion has been made and second in all favor. Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Agenda item 8E, public hearing, annexation A18-014528, Sunset Lake Road property, Gina Klepp. Good evening. Hi, Gina. I am sad to say we are going to table this one more meeting. <laughs> um, the property owners have been able to confirm that they do have access and availability to get to our utilities. They do owe us some paperwork before we actually move to the annexation. Um, we were not able to get it before tonight's meeting. We were hoping it might come in today, but it did not. Um, so if we continue this to July 17th, we'll have the official public hearing and annexation on July 17th. Need a motion. Motion to open and continue the public hearing for annexation ordinance A18-01 to July 17th, 2018. Second. Motion made second all in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Good job, Gina. Agenda item 8A, consent agenda, Mayor Pro Tem. Uh, motion to approve consent agenda. Second. Motion been made second, all in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passes unanimously. Agenda item 9A, unfinished business. There's a whole bunch here. 17 SEU 16, 17 DP 16, 17 VARTC 09, 17 VARTC 10, 18 WAV 02, 18 WAV 03, United Community Bank, Sean Ryan. All 
All right, this is a continuation of the agenda item from April 18th and May 15th uh, for the special exception use development plan associated waivers and variances for uh, United Community Bank uh, for a new project in the town village district, specifically a uh, bank at the corner of Arp Street and Main Street. Uh, just to refresh your memory on the project, uh, Arp Street along the top of the screen here, uh, South Main Street along the left-hand side of the screen. Uh, the proposal is for a two-story bank uh, and associated parking and drive aisles, as well as two variances, one for a setback reduction uh, for the building facade along Arp Street and a second variance request to allow two drive-through service windows to the rear of the building. This is the proposed landscaping plan. Uh, these plans were officially submitted to the town after the last town council meeting to reflect the uh, proposed changes made by the applicant in regards to the landscaping along the rear of the property. Uh, these are the proposed building elevations, the front elevation facing South Main Street, the left elevation facing Arp Street, uh, the corresponding opposite side elevations. Uh, there were two waiver requests. One was for a building bay reduction waiver and the other one was a glazing waiver. Uh, and with that, uh, included in your packet was some uh, information that the applicant did send to staff after the last town council meeting regarding some of the changes that were discussed here uh, back in May and the applicant's response uh, to those uh, discussion items. Uh, so with that, um, I will invite the applicant up to kind of discuss where they're at with this project, unless you have any questions for me. At right. this point, I don't think. No. Please come forward, sir. Remind us of the name and address, too, please. Good evening. Uh, Mayor and Council, my name is Mike Zicardo with Weatherill Engineering, uh, 1223 Jones Franklin Road in Raleigh. Um, <clears throat> we are here tonight to hopefully seek approval for our site plan. Uh, I think since our last meeting, we've come back uh, to the town and proposed some additional plantings across the rear of a, a, an adjacent parcel to us, which we're, we're gonna subdivide the piece now into two pieces. And we've proposed some additional plantings, I guess across the back east property line. And, um, We've also uh, shown uh, a proposed stormwater management system on site uh, since we understand uh, the, the town project has been postponed. Uh, initially, our plans did not have stormwater. We were piping our water on over to the uh, west side of Main Street uh, to, I think, the, the proposed Mim, MIMS Park project. Um, so they're the two major changes we've made to the site plan. Okay. And uh, we're here to answer any questions. Questions to the applicant? You mentioned the subdivision of parcels. Does, is there any plan for the second parcel that's not being developed at this point? Any no thoughts as to what they'd use that for in the future or anything? Um, I, think, I think our owner will probably sell the piece of property. But it's set up with a shared driveway. Right for the town village requirements. Anything further about the thought process with the uh, adjacent business across the street? We talked about that at some length. Uh, I, I don't think our, our, our developer, our owner is, is interested or, or really can probably donate to a project that's not theirs. But the intent is to try to share costs in utilizing single contractor to make those. I think that's still sure. That's time. still on well, the that's, table. Yeah, that's yeah. Right. yeah. Yeah, our contractor, our, our, our developer would would work with them and, and maybe try to, if the timing works out right, try to hire hire the same contractor to to save both a little bit on on construction costs. Okay. What else? I just wanted to ask again, because one of the, the conditions we're hoping to consider is being more pedestrian friendly to look for walkability to the bank and use without driving up. 
uh, uh, the bank is not interested in, in putting in a, a walk-up ATM for, for the reasons I think that we went over last, last, last month. Um, security is, is pretty much a big thing. Mm -hmm. I think the chief talked about that too. Whatever. Uh, what else is on anybody's mind at this point? The, the trees and the buffer that's been added to the landscape plan. Can you just refresh our memory on what those what those are? The caliber of them. I can't tell you off the top of my head. Um, it's. I, th I think it's the same 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 diameter that we're putting across the back of ours. We just extended them down. Is, is that correct? <clears throat> Four inches. Of the trees and across the back. So really, nothing's changed since our last meeting. Excuse me. Nothing. No other new updates since the last meeting that we were going to try. I think the owner had mentioned uh, to council that uh, the road improvements across the street that I think. He had mentioned forty thousand dollars wasn't going to be an issue. If that would be because we did at the time we didn't know the cost. Right, that's right, that's right. So uh, Kendra had to, you know we had asked I don't know if it was eighty or whatever, but um, I think he had mentioned forty thousand would would uh, would not. I, I think, sir, he he brought it back to his okay his powers to be in that. Yeah, he, that was a purpose of my question too. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, that was the purpose of my question too. And the answer was again? Yeah. No, they do not intend to put money intent. into that project. Okay. okay. I think we ended up in a rat hole last month with that. Because there was some commentary in an email that was attached in the packet. And then the comments that were made kind of led us down that path. And I think that's how we got there with the numbers and everything. So at this point, it sounds like we've clarified all that and the shared cost with the same contractors, what, you know, at least what I'm hearing is you know, the, the proposal, mm -hmm. but I, I, but nothing, in nothing we don't know what that would, it could be, we don't know. That, yeah, I mean, it's the yeah. same email that we saw with that, right? So yeah. mm -hmm. it's a good, good faith that they would, that they would do that and work with the neighboring, but they're not required, yeah. they're not required to, right? right, right in right, good right, faith, right. hopefully they would do that. That's right. I think the neighboring business is happy with that. I'm sorry. I think the neighboring business is happy to uh, utilize that to, to Possibly share in, in a single contractor to do the work at the at the same time, so that uh, um, the cost of that is shared and not uh, um, taken on by both parties and, and so more expensive. I don't think we can assure that, right? Because there's really nothing in writing. Mm -hmm. Not right. point. That's good faith. Yeah. Okay, what else for the applicant? Anything? I was just going to mention, I, I continue to talk to some of the local residents, and they really felt strongly about it being very pedestrian friendly. That was one of the things they felt would speak to having a bank located in that area and being the neighborhood type of bank they were looking for. So I think they are, they'll be disappointed. Yeah. Um, the owner did go, like I said, the next morning. He, I wrote that email in your packet and uh, after getting with my client and and they had checked internally and uh, they they, re they really felt like the drive up ATM kind of serves both purposes um, you could drive up to it and you could walk up to it and there's lights out there at night um, if you have it on the front of the building you can't drive up to it so they kind of feel like there will be an ATM there available to folks. Now, Councilor, do we have to resolve the tree issue before we go any further? Is that so correct? If you were to um, make your findings and approve the development plan, you would be waiving the, the penalties under the timbering ordinance. Does that require a separate motion? No, sir. I mean, if you, if you go forward with it, you've in essence waived the penalties under the under the under the ordinance, which is the ordinance allows you to do. Theoretically, if, if we don't approve those things, does it go back to the three year or two year, or, or we would have to vote on that? Um, I if you were to enforce the penalties under the timbering ordinance, I would ask you to make a finding that that's what you're doing, that you've you found a violation, and that 
you, you know, so three options, approve it, waive, which would be a waiver of, of the ordinance, um, enact the violations, in which case it would be a three year um, penalty uh, from, the, from the time of um, the trees being cut or if, if you were to find as a fact that they did not meet the criteria under the special exception use as, as, as it relates to um, uh, in keeping with the downtown area, um, then you can do that without enacting the penalty and they could come back with a plan that could allow you to satisfy your findings of fact that they meet the walkability type of thing. So that would be your third option. Um, you, I do believe you would need to find as a fact um, that they have failed to meet the criteria in the special exception use um, that requires the, um, in the sort of the in keeping with the downtown core area um, in order to deny the plan. In other words, you can't just deny the plan because you don't like the plan. You have to find as a fact mm -hmm. why they why the plan doesn't meet the factual criteria that you need to find. And you could do that without invoking the three-year penalty. That's the third option for you. What's the thoughts, Council? We got a uh, community-oriented bank. Uh, I think apologies have been made, uh, whether or not that's appropriate or not. Uh, it's kind of up to you to do we pursue and go further or what? Hello? <laughs> well, I'm, I, I know apologies have been made, but I've also felt um, it was a little dis disrespectful when comments were made that, well, the trees are going to have to go anyway. Um, that, that was really bothersome because with other businesses, we have worked around that. Uh, I wish they'd come to us to discuss that first. Um, that's my two cents. I, like I said, I've been spending time with residents and I think that the disappointment about the trees and then wanting it to be more village feel and walkability is a big concern. And so I'm, I'm leaning more towards the third option. Other ideas, opinions? Listening. I, you know, I think my, my opinion would be in, in a couple of different cases, they've uh, met our requirements in the village area by adding the, the eight foot sidewalks down Main Street and then along their frontage on ERP and the public uh, art feature that's gonna be on the corner, which is why they have the one waiver, I believe, setting, setting the building back some and then accommodated you know, an extra buffer in the back. So I'm, I'm <coughs> of the opinion that they have made some concessions. They're meeting our requirements um, based on the information in the packets. I do believe there's a good faith effort working with the neighboring business to try and work on those street improvements together. So I think they're going above and beyond in some areas. Um, I guess that's that's my take. I'd, I'd be fine moving to the development plan. Yeah, that'd be mine too. Uh, who else? I mean, you heard our concerns at the last town meeting, right? Excuse me. You, you heard our concerns at our mm -hmm. last town meeting, and the owner came up and was giving options. So I was like hoping that uh, it would would change, and he pretty much said, you know, we could possibly help contribute forty thousand dollars. Uh, to that, so I, I was hoping to hear something, maybe not 40, maybe it's 10, I, I, I don't know, but um, that, that's what I was hoping for tonight, that there would be, you've heard us, our concerns, um, and that uh, you, you would have came back instead of the same story that we were a few weeks ago. So. Sir, I, like I said, uh, Jeff Pope did yeah. go go to his his uh, superiors the next day, and I think I think they found uh, it wasn't in their best interest to do that legally. I'll let Jimmy Boykin uh, uh, 
Yeah, we have Stevenson Contracting speak. Okay, yeah. Hmm. Just repeat again your name and address. I'm Jimmy please. Boykin with M. Derwood Stevenson and Associates. We are the consulting developers for United Community Bank, formerly First uh, Four Oaks Bank and Trust. Um, we, are, we are amenable to a uh, fine of some amount of money. What we find ourselves in the position of is that we cannot monetarily contribute to a, uh, another development in as much as that is a potential customer, and I'll defer to the town lawyer, but we find ourselves getting in trouble with the North Carolina Banking Commission by doing that. It looks as if we're buying business. Mm -hmm. So we could not do it directly with another developer. We've talked to him and we're willing to cooperate with him in the sharing of, of resources and contractors to save mobility costs, among other things. If the timing works out where we both do it, you know, at the, at the same time. Uh, we'd be willing to do that. Uh, we would, uh, if a fine were levied for the removing of the trees, I'm sure the bank would be willing to pay that fine, whatever amount you feel is fair. I would, I would uh, mention that the landscaping that was added at the rear of the lot was not required, and, and we did that in order to buffer the residential neighborhood from our project and to to add trees where we mistakenly uh, remove trees and apologize for that, but um, we're trying to make up for that by adding other trees and other plantings where we thought it would be most beneficial to the property. Questions or comments? Seeing none, thanks sir. Thank you. Councilor, go over the options again for us, please. Oh, uh, you could uh, make make the necessary findings that the um, that, that are required in your packet and go forward with the development plan. And in the event that you did that, um, it would in essence be a waiver of the um, of any penalty under the right. under the uh, uh, tree preser the timbering ordinance. Right. You could um, alternatively. In, invoke the penalties under the timbering ordinance and um, institute a penalty of a three-year wait for any type of town permit uh, on that property uh, or you you could um, uh, consider all the factors that you need to consider with this site plan and uh, simply just fail to meet those uh, find as a fact that, that the applicant fails to meet those um, those factors without really still ruling on the timbering plan and I'll, that would allow them to, to come back and convince you that, that the, the, the site plan is in keeping with the, the uh, requirements of the ordinance the, the findings the, uh, that it's um, what in essence what you want to see downtown so so am I correct if if we go to the site plan review right now and go past the tree ordinance then tell me again um, if that's the choice sure the, uh, you know the, the the tree ordinance doesn't doesn't say that you can invoke a penalty um, also doesn't say <coughs> what conditions could exist to get you to want to waive that penalty. Mm -hmm. So, um, if the applicant, uh, I heard the applicant, um, so representative state that they'd be willing to pay a reasonable fine for the uh, the, the tree penalty ordinance, um, the tree ordinance penalty. So, um, you know that that could be a condition of your waiving the the tree ordinance uh, penalty of of a three year right. moratorium. Right. Um, it doesn't, we, we didn't put in the ordinance dollars for trees. Um, we put in time delay for trees because we thought that would be back in 2004 when we did it, I thought that would be more of a penalty. Um, otherwise, you know. Okay. Do we have the authority to, to levy a fine? I, I think you do. I think you have the authority to waive it on a condition that you're going to pay some sort of restitution okay. amount, um, you know, into 
you know, you probably want to direct that it goes into some tree tree fund. Uh, some that, that's some something fund. I would yeah. like to consider. Do we have to have that amount right if now? we could use that? I, well, I don't know how much you can charge, but yeah. um, I'm, I'm happy to let staff and the developer work out what's reasonable and amenable for for that loss and, and that money could go into the tree city usa program or something like that that we have here i, I don't think stopping development for three years is really an option that that hurts the town and that and stops the whole process no no i don't want that and you know there were some missteps and even missteps after those missteps but i think in in general um that there's been good faith in this project, and, and I, I know the, the business owners nearby are, are, I don't think there was expectation of them to have money given to them because of the, the problem with <coughs> trees. So I, I think um, as good faith and just as <coughs> good business for both you and them to work out a uh, possibility of, of using single contractor in a single period of time to get that work done, the improvements on, on Arp Street. Um, the, as, as Councilman Barry said, the, the piece of artwork on the corner there will be a nice entrance into town right. and, uh, and the decorative sidewalk from downtown up there. And, you know, not ideal, but at least the ATM is still accessible at all hours. Um, so uh, that's my two cents. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you. I, I think um, it's a good project. Uh, Councilor, is that, do we have to so, put a dollar amount on that? I asked the same question, yeah. I on that tonight? I, I think we do, right? Cause what I heard was um, some sort of um, Councilman Billison said that you'd be comfortable leaving it up to staff to come up with a, uh, a restorative. Um, figure amount, you know, as opposed to a punitive figure amount, you know, we, we really don't want to be punitive. We want to be yeah. restorative justice. So <laughs> some, some amount that we could come up with, if, if you choose to, you could, um, pass the resolution that sets forth all the findings that you need to make and let us have some editorial final control over it, in which we will set a dollar, uh, you know, a, a dollar amount. Um, we will put some, sort of fluffy language in there that <laughs> the drive through ATM shall be uh, to the extent at all practical and possible to accommodate walk up use. It'll be lighted. It'll be pedestrian friendly to the extent, you know, it's not going to be a bumper kind of industrial chute <laughs> that you drive through. It'd be something that you could in theory walk up to. I, th I think we could probably capture in the resolution approving all these findings. I think we could probably try and capture your intent. Um, you know, if you trust us, so you'd be approving the the, the resolution, uh, the findings um, to be set forth in a resolution with sort of editorial control by the, the staff and, and us to work through. And then, of course, it'll um, you'll see it when when the uh, minutes are approved. If there's something un ungodly that you can't live with, we can yeah. we could probably change it. But doing that, it allow them to go forward with their through the process. It's a it's a long process. Or yet you got um, construction drawing approvals that have to have to happen. So if there's something you want to really put the brakes on, you you still can. But but passing the resolution subject to final approval by the town attorney. We'll, we'll get the ball rolling. I, you know, I think, I think what, you know, I think I, I can capture what you want want to have mm -hmm. happen with this with this okay. site. Yeah, my feeling is that the bank and, and the people involved in the bank are probably pretty agreeable to that kind of approach. I was watching Shake's Head or Head Shake or Shake's Head for that matter. So, are you saying? We're giving you permission to look to add friendly language to make it more pedestrian friendly. And there's also <coughs> some sort of fine that you will also put in there. Do you have a range for what you think that would, like a ballpark, does that? I, I don't know. I'd probably want to talk to our, um, you know, our arborist tree expert to see, um, you know, I, I, I don't think it's $30,000. I don't think it's $2,000. You know, I, 
as far as, as what, what would be a, a logical pen penalty or restorative amount in this in this particular um, case. So I, I, you know, probably look to get some, um, you know, I don't want to be the tree police, um, but look to some expert opinion on, as to what, you know, what we can do that would, you know, help restore the quality of the, the, the visual quality of downtown was, was, I think we can all agree was some somewhat impacted by the removal of those trees because those were the first two that you saw when you came into the downtown area, almost, you know, basically. So there's something that could be done um, and there's some amount of money that, that, that could uh, help in that regard. Mm -hmm. The only, the only other comment I wanted to say that I heard from folks is the, the village feel for the building is quite square and it's kind of lost and we're giving variances for losing some of that depth and that was the only other thing. But I think it's too late for that now, isn't it? Because mm -hmm. it was like, first I thought we were talking about the trees, now it's almost like we lost the chance to talk about some of the, the village architecture. Okay. Yeah, I do believe that's, um, if, if you, if you do want to look at a particular architectural control overlay district, I think we we need to do that in a separate I think in a separate setting. Which we've done in the past. Um, Not to hear. So if that's the consensus of the, of the uh, council, what is the next step? What's the um, what's the proposed motion? Back, Sean. That's the ordinance. My understanding is that we are uh, uh, neither one of those. Yeah. So there's a. I thought there was a proposed resolution. Mm -hmm. um, Maybe that's it. So yeah, if you make that motion and then um, give final or give editorial control to the staff and town attorney to to um, include language to enhance the pedestrian feel right. Right. Of, of the site um, and to provide a, um, an amount as a restorative measure um, to compensate for the timbering violation. Is that a time, would there be a time frame on when that, that fine would be paid? Oh, yes. Depends on how much it is. Um, so, <laughs> uh, yeah. certainly, it would be before the certificate of occupancy is right. um, issued for the bank. Well, again, I think I think just my opinion, it's just my own, perhaps that uh, it's a good project. I know what some of the uh, things would happen if we went to a three-year process. That's not good. Uh, that goes away. I think our existing bank needs a place to go across the street. And that's getting closer and closer in time. I think the uh, the bank has been very good, perhaps not as perfect as everybody would like, but uh, I, I'm going to suggest that we consider the one through five motions is what I'm saying. That's up to you. With the, with the comments that the counselors already made about working with staff. Comments? No, I think... I'm in agreement with that. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's have somebody hit number one. Motion to adopt resolution number 18-15 to make and accept the necessary findings of fact for the special exception use variants and waivers associated with the development plan submitted for the United Community Bank. We want to add, okay. Uh, we'll, we will uh, advise it, uh, we will edit and staff and the town attorney will add additional language provided uh, the certain fees or penalty fees uh, for the uh, replacement of the old trees. Also to add language in there to add um, more of a walkable uh, place. So, is that good? Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Second. Motion be made and second all in favor. Uh, Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Number two. 
Having made the necessary findings of fact, motion to approve waivers of UDO 18-WAV-02 and 18-WAV-03 in association with the development plan for United Community Bank. Second. Motion to be made second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Number three. Having made the necessary findings of fact, motion to approve variance petition 17-VARTC-09 to allow for an increase in the maximum front yard along Earp Street from 15 feet to 26 feet in association with the development plan for United Community Bank. Second. What's been made in second? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? No. Unanimous. Number four of five. Having made the necessary findings of fact, the motion to approve variance petition 17 VARTC 10 to allow for a drive through lanes in association with the development plan for United Community Bank. Second. Motion been made and second in all favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. And five of five. <laughs> and I think as, as printed might be good in a minute. Having made the necessary findings of fact, motion to approve special accepting use 17 dash SEU dash 16 to allow for a new project in the TV Town Village District and development plan 17 dash DP dash 16 for United Community Bank dated dated revised 522-18 with conditions listed in agenda packets as stated on the screen. Second. Motion made and second all in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. And I think that's it. Right, Sean, thank Mr. you. Mr. Mayor, if I could just say one thing. Please. I don't think it was appropriate for me to say it before you made your findings, but I mean, if it wasn't for United Community Bank or it's really its predecessor, Four Oaks, the food cupboard never would have got its loan mm -hmm. to uh, build it, to buy its property there. And I don't know who gets the credit, the bank or Scott Booth, but there's, you know, they are both certainly done a, a lot of good for the community. That's probably just one very small thing. So I, you know, I just, I'll be remiss if I didn't say it, but I didn't totally say agree. it before you made your findings. Yeah, totally agree. I did a little research on the bank itself uh, between last time and now, and all I hear is good things about how community-oriented this bank is, and I appreciate that. So I think we made the right decision. That's all I got to say. Okay? Thank you all. Thank you, Council. Gen item 9B, unfinished business, FY 2017-18, grant awards. Uh, who's gonna tackle this, Dan? You are, Sherry, first, or Dan, or what? Yeah, um, so last meeting, we yep. made the grant committee, uh, Councilwoman Lee, myself, and Councilman Villadson made recommendations for our FY 18 community grants. We had $2,000 left from that um, this year, and we allowed the clerk to open up the application period for another uh, couple weeks. Right. Uh, to see if we got anything else in that time, we do we did have two submissions: one from the Holly Springs Rotary, Rotary Club, with a request for fifteen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, that application was for, I think, largely for some scholarship work that they do in the community, and the second was for the Lions Club, which is a organization that we awarded uh, previously one thousand dollars to for their vision screening machine. However, this uh, application was uh, one thousand dollars for a different initiative. They are partnering with the Parks and Rec Department for Hollyfest this year, doing some additions to the Hayride, uh, looking to add a haunted house feature to that, and they yeah. would be using that $1,000 uh, for that uh, event. Um, so the, the grant committee has, has a recommendation, so I'll list that, and then we can go ahead and discuss if anyone else has some thoughts. Um, we have 2,000 left. There's been 2,500 submitted, so the, the grant committee would like to make a recommendation of $1,000 to the Lions Club for their Hollyfest improvements. Uh, we had decided on $500 for the Rotary Club to assist their scholarship program, mm -hmm. and uh, we had went back to our previous applications and, and had discussed <coughs> adding $500 to uh, Interact, which is one of the groups. Right. Uh, not based in Holly Springs, but I think, as I stated last time, there's 71 individuals that had used their services from Holly Springs that in the past year that we know of. Um, and the committee recommends raising their overall grant to $1,000 total. Mm -hmm. That would that would be uh, $1,500, to appropriate the additional $2,000 we had left. Yeah. You all agreed, right? Consensus? I think that's great. I think you did a good job. Comments to the right. Thank you no. for the extra money. Thank you. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> All right. May we have a motion? Motion, okay. Motion to award uh, uh, fiscal year 2017-18 community agency grants, as just discussed. 
Second. Motion been made and second all in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you very much. Motion passes. Joni, you got all the numbers right? You yes, okay sir. on that? Okay, thank you so much. All right. Moving right along. 10A, new business, bond order introduction for transportation bond referendum. Tina Strope. Good evening. Good evening. Okay. Okay. I'm here tonight to present the um, transportation bond referendum um, for the bond order for introduction and give you an update where we are in the transportation bond process and give you an overview of what still needs to be done between now and um, the November 6th referendum. So I'm going to, first of all, just um, give you a little background. On May the 15th, after the town council adopted a resolution stating its proposal to issue the general obligation bonds to pay the capital cost of providing transportation improvements for the town, we, the staff, submitted the application to the North Carolina Local Government Commission, and the um, Local Government Commission has accepted and approve the proposed bonds for referendum. So that means we can go ahead and move forward. Um, if these bonds are approved by voters on the November 6th ballot, they will be paid for with a property tax increase of 5% per $100 of property assessed. For example, with a $250 or $250,000 home, the tax increase would add an additional $125 per year to their tax bill. So we are about halfway through the process, and here's what we have completed so far. Um, we have done a tentative referendum plan, and that's kind of what I'm going to go over tonight, just a little timeline of what we need to do, or what we've done and what we need to do. Um, we actually, several staff members have met with the LGC for an informal meeting to just to discuss the town's plans, um, the amount we were going to, to request um, for the bond referendum, um, the purpose of these bonds, and our repayment plan. Um, the informal notice to Wake County Board of Elections has been um, emailed, and we've also called them, and all we needed to send to them is just to let them know that there would be a, that we are expecting a bond referendum, mm -hmm. so we can make sure that our timeline fit with their schedule as well. Um, the council adopted the preliminary resolution um, for the purpose of the bond issuance and authorizing the publication of the notice of intent to, and to file for the LGC application. The um, bond council made the 45-day filing to the legislative committee. Um, this 45-day letter is a rel relatively new thing that they've done within the past couple of years. The uh, legislative joint committee on local government is requesting that any time that someone's borrowing more than a million dollars, that the committee is just notified and they have to file and just let them know that, that, that that's coming. Um, our notice of intent has been filed and published. Um, the complete statement of debt and statement of estimated interest has been completed, and after tonight's meeting, we'll go ahead and file that with the town clerk this week. The um, LGC application has been filed. Um, like I said, it's been come, it's been approved, and we're good to go. So that's what's been done so far, and. What is coming up next, here's a, t a little bit of a timeline. Tonight, we're going to introduce the bond order to council, and you'll need to um, approve that so we can go forward. Um, tomorrow, or later this week, we're going to file the Soren Swake Statement of Debt and Estimated Interest. The um, 20, On the June 24th, we'll have to publish the notice of public hearing. Um, the Motion for a public hearing was actually on the consent agenda tonight, so that's been approved. Um, on the July 17th meeting, our um, public hearing will happen, and we will also adopt the bond order. So I just want to let you know that you guys will see the bond order actually twice, once tonight for introduction and again on the 17th for adoption. Mm -hmm. So I just want to let you guys know that. Um, and this is due, just due to statutory requirements. We have to do this twice, and it's, allow, it's designed to allow the residents extra notice that, that, that something's coming to be considered. Um, also at the July 17th meeting, the ballot question is going to be formally set, um, as well as the referendum day, which is going to be November the 6th. So after that happens at the July 17th meeting, the we're going to publish the adopted bond order. Um, that's going to have to be published twice between July 18th and October 5th, um, just to give residents mm -hmm. enough notice. 
And then on November 6th, the, elect, um, the election will happen and residents are gonna just um, vote yay or nay on the referendum. So that's what's actually coming. And you know we're about halfway through the process and there's gonna be, July 17th, we'll have, we'll have several things to, motions to approve. And that is all I have. Can Questions I, or comments? I have a question and this is to Kendra. Okay. We had the luxury of being in a meeting earlier today, okay. and we talked about some alternatives for the public hearing date. Am, am I recalling that correctly? Yes, so um, as Tina was saying, originally we had planned to come back before council at the end of July, mm -hmm. but as the committee's meeting, we would like to um, get the messaging together and have that messaging, that release date coincide with the public hearing. So we're checking with our bond counsel, Bob Jessup, to um, perhaps delay that until the first meeting in August so it would more align with the messaging and the release of information. And um, just, he's gonna check, but it sounded like that would probably be something that could be done. Um, so just that might be one change that we have okay. in the schedule. All right, well, I will. Um, this afternoon okay. at four o'clock. Yeah. <laughs> I will say that we um, actually checked with the Board of Elections. I think there was some issue with trying to get the, the ballot question to them a little bit earlier, and they said the 17th would be fine. So if we need to adjust it, we'll need to check with them again as well. The motion doesn't restrict that at all anyway, so I no. think we're good if everybody agrees. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Somebody hit it. Motion to introduce order 18-02, the 2018 Town of Holly Springs Transportation Bond Order. Second. Motion made. Second, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you. Thank you, Tina. Good Thank job. You. Thank you. Thank you. Gen item 10B, new business, the noise ordinance amendment. And that would be from Captain Jay Bruner and Council Paul Allen and Chief Herring. Just to introduce the idea that um, you know our current noise ordinance is is a um, what, what, what you'd call a subjective noise ordinance. It's based on um, no unreasonable noises shall be created during certain time periods. Um, courts have really struck down all those that type of criteria because what's unreasonable to you is not unreasonable to me and you need uh, a guiding um, uh, you, you, you need a little bit more guidance in order to be constitutional so I don't know that we've had an effective noise ordinance since our since this adoption really or change in 2001 um, and um, it's, it's a long time coming but we've uh, put together, and Paul can speak to this, on a, a, a sort of a survey of local communities and, and, and the requirements and uh, come up with an objective standard, which is um, requires our officers to have devices to measure the decibel range um, at certain locations based on complaints, noise complaints. So with that, I'll just tee it off to Chief Herring. Thank you. Um, so, so first, I would just uh, like to say thank you for consideration in revising this uh, ordinance. Um, as Mr. Schifano said, the language in the ordinance, which is currently ex completely subjective, has offered uh, over the years quite a few challenges from an enforcement standpoint. Mm -hmm. So I think um, uh, as it stands right now, if, we, if, if, if someone complains uh, about noise, we respond. Uh, which this past year we responded uh, to 182 calls for service that were related to noise and about 70 percent of those or about 120 of those calls the officers just <laughs> issued a, um, a verbal warning because basically they are um, pretty much their hands are tied there's not a lot that they can do to mitigate these um, these types of complaints uh, and that's largely because of the subjectivity of the, in the, of the language in this ordinance um, we basically, the other thing that's happening is that citizens are um, required to go to court and testify because we have to rely completely on the testimony um, of the person complaining as to how annoying that um, the noise is. Uh, so the new ordinance will allow us to um, have something somewhat tangible, uh, a measurement, so that we can determine if it is um, exceeding a, a standard. Um, so I think this will be, uh, from an, an enforcement standpoint, a tool for the officers on the tool belt 
um, you know, to have a device where they could actually objectively measure something um, and then uh, take enforcement action as needed. It doesn't mean that we're going to always take enforcement action. It doesn't mean we're always going to cite. There'll still be cases where we um, will uh, warn the individuals, and that's what we hope that we can do most of the time. Uh, in fact, this will give us the ability to measure the noise and either tell the complainant it's not exceeding the standard, or if it is, we can go to wherever the source of the noise is, say it's a business, and we can ask them to, tr to, to turn the noise down or uh, you know, something like that, and then we can measure it for them and say, that's, you know, okay, that's good where you are now. So I think it just gives us a lot of, um, a lot of options. So yeah. as far as the measurement goes, I'm going to let Captain Bruner talk a little bit about that. He is the only person, the only friend that I have that actually has his own recording studio, so he knows a little bit about sound. So I brought him along because he can speak. Uh, he's not that. your only friend, though. Is that he's correct? not my only friend. But he's the only friend that I have with a recording studio. John, we have one, too. So see, there's two. You have a recording studio? We okay, well, there's two. Oh, there's two. Hmm. All right. Um, so as the chief said, uh, you know, a, a major problem for us is, is trying to work between the complainant and the offender in the situation and, and, and come to some objective standard, and that's been very, very difficult for us. Uh, the, our method that we're going to be utilizing to uh, make these observations is these handy-dandy little Ghostbuster-looking items here, um, which are SPL meters. Uh, they measure sound pressure, um, which is essentially a decibel reading. Uh, the ordinance as it's written, or as it's proposed, uh, will have us called by a complainant and we'll go to the edge of that offending property if it's a, a single-use property. And we'll be able to turn on the uh, SPL meter and stand at the edge of the property and take a reading. And outlined in the proposed ordinance, there are certain thresholds that are to be acceptable during the day and at night. Um, as, we, uh, as we measure the sound at the edge of the property, we'll be able to then make that determination if we need to go back to the complainant and say, sorry, they're well within their right, then they're well within their right. Or if the offense is happening, again, we could stand there at the edge of that property and help them bring the level down to where it needs to be. Um, the standard of the decibel readings that we'll be using is uh, based on the um, International Society for Standards something. But they, uh, they're the ones that determine whether or not these are accurate. And before the officer gets out of the car, they'll use the calibration tool. They'll calibrate the unit, which is this handy dandy orange and green thing here. They'll stand at the edge of the property. They'll take readings over a period of time. And, the, and those periods of time and the number of violations over that period of time are outlined in the ordinance. And they range from a minute to 10 minutes, correct? Right. And if they see a certain number of uh, spikes on the reader here, they will then be able to go and make that, take that enforcement action. Would you guys like? No, keep talking in the mic, please. <laughs> You're being recorded so, for history. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so that's essentially what we'll be doing with these. I'm hoping that we'll be able to, uh, to bring those people together. We don't want to disrupt the businesses. That's one, there's been a particular business I don't think that they're doing anything uh, to, to hurt anybody intentionally or to disrupt anybody intentionally. But, you know, one particular case is what brought this to our attention, that it was just kind of repeated, that we'd have a, a resident complaining about a noise. And we found that there was really no answer that we could, we could give them other than you can come to court which that disrupts the citizen's day, and you know we're, we're trying to get away from that. So fortunately, uh, Mr. Shifana and Mr. Allen have helped us with that. They can get down into the minutia of the, of the ordinance itself. Uh, Mr. Allen worked very hard writing it and putting it together, and uh, I think we're happy with the outcome here. I think it enables our officers to, to really um, develop some answer and resolution on both sides of the equation. Got a question for you, Captain. Yes, sir. Let's say that uh, we get a call from somebody in Arbor Creek saying that the Ting Stadium is driving me crazy at 10 o'clock or 9 o'clock. I know it's never happened, but possibility. Never. Where would, you, where would you check the decibel level, both at the stadium and at their house, or what? I'm just curious. Well, in that particular case, uh, the, there's an exception for Ting Stadium. Um, so to use another example, let's say once the, the village district becomes developed down there and you have a, a multi-use facility there, 
where you might have some restaurants and such occupying the same space as other businesses. Uh, the way that the ordinance is written for those multi-use uh, facilities like that, those multi-tenant facilities, we would go to the complainant's house and measure the sound from that from location. That point, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that's about one sure. Thank you. Other questions, Captain? The uh, devices have to be certi like certification. Cal or, <coughs> let me figure out how to say this. A certification of the calibration, similar to like a radar device, to make sure that it's accurate to be admissible or anything like that. No, no, Not uh, strict. that's they come self-contained and they have their calibration. It's it's actually they're very very similar to our Alka sensors that we use, and you know of course every time that an officer got out of the car, our protocol will be in our policy that they will calibrate it and ensure that it's doing what it's supposed to do before they take that reading. Um, that information would go into their report, which would then go to court, but hopefully we can avoid going to court completely. That's not our goal at all. Our goal is education and, right. and trying to prevent that completely. Sounds good. How, how much does each one cost? I think the ones that we, I, these are I think three. these were somewhere around $400. They, they range from, you can, you can buy some for $50 or I think I saw some as much as twelve hundred, maybe fifteen hundred dollars. Um, but I believe that this is what City of Raleigh uses. Okay. So All right. That's that was going to be my question. How many are we going to have? Like hypothetically, if somebody's in a neighborhood and their neighbor is having a party, the patrolman would they have one, or would they have to go back and get the? That's unit? a good question. And we currently have two, so okay. there'll be one on each side. We say each side, so there'll be a, a day a day shift and a night shift. So, but it'll be accessible. Um, okay. There are some resources that we have that we can't afford to buy for every single right. officer that's a shared resource. Mm -hmm. So it would likely be with one of our watch commanders. So if someone needed it. Um, and, then it, and then if he was not there, he'd just pass it on to the, to the sergeant or the line super, supervisor. But they would always have access to it. Okay. So it seems like it's a, such a small difference for, for like residential decibels, 60 during the day and 55 at night. Can you give an example of what 55 might be like versus sure. 60? Um, so what you've got to understand is that 70 is like an arbitrary decibel number based off of a scale that was made up for the A weight. Um, so if you think 60, 60 is actually half of 70 in the way that those things are measured. So each time that you move up about 10, you're increasing twofold, essentially, in sound pressure. So um, as examples, uh, <laughs> so as examples, uh, 60 decibel daytime um, volume or perceived volume by the human ear is, is like ambient conversation in a restaurant. So if you were sitting in a restaurant, as you would normally hear people talking around you, that's what that would be. Uh, background music is another example. The music that you hear when you get into an elevator, that's about 60 decibels. Um, the 55 decibel nighttime, uh, it's the typical noises of a quiet suburban area uh, or the conversational volume within a home, like you would have in your living room, is about what they say that that, that would mirror to. Uh, the commercial businesses, the 70 decibel daytime uh, volume in those areas that are zoned that way would be a vacuum cleaner running at approximately 10 feet away from you during the daytime. It's about what you could get away with. Uh, or the volume of a television or radio at a comfortable listening level where conversation can still be had over top of it. Um, you drop that down to the 65 decibel at nighttime and that's someone speaking in normal conversation approximately three feet away from you at a given time. It would give you points of reference for those. Um, that's why those numbers are what they are. And they, they actually, uh, Mr. Schifano, Mr. Allen, and I, and Chief sat down and kind of went through what we thought would be reasonable given what we're trying to accomplish here. That, not, that and we copied everybody else. <laughs> right. Yeah. Is it conceivable as we're adding more downtown businesses and there's more nighttime stuff? There are some residents that have been there for a long time. I know that noise is a sensitivity. Would we be able to maybe adjust it if we hear, like, see that the situation is hard on some of those residents? You could change the ordinance any anytime you anytime want. Oh, okay. So when we when we get to it, if everybody says, look, you know, it's constant noise, the threshold's too high, we need to lower it. You, the council can certainly do that. We'll be able to work with with your 
your staff to see what makes sense. Okay. Yeah, and, and, and we, we absolutely can, can offer that feedback as we move along and, and, and we'll track, you know, the number of complaints that so we'll have some data for you to look at too. Could you possibly give us some feedback in probably a month or two or three or four type of thing on how you're doing? Because I, I find it very curious. I sure. think it's also something that's way overdue. Yes, so I, appreciate I agree. That. And yep, and we're happy to do that. Yeah, thank you. Anything else? One change that was made that just wasn't mentioned was that we've, we've had requests for a uh, no engine braking ordinance, um, which is a jake brake ordinance. Oh, yeah. Trucks going down the hill of a bypass press a button and it's an engine retardant and you often hear it go wah, 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 wah. Yeah. Um, so that's that's now prohibited in the ordinance um, okay anything else all good yep how about a motion please and thank you john thank you captain I'll make the motion to adopt the ordinance 18-08, amending the Holly Springs Code of Ordinances on Noises. Second. Motion made. Second. All favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion passes unanimously. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Great. Agenda item 10C: New Business, New Hill Road Sidewalk and Sidewalk Project, Town of Holly Springs, Number 16-005, Request for Funds for R-W Acquisition, Dirk Siebenbrot. Hi, Dirk. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor Sears. Good evening, Town Council. Tonight, I would like to request additional funds for the New Hill Road sidewalk project, more specifically funds for the permanent sidewalk easement purchase. I'm just going to give a quick overview about this sidewalk <clears throat> project. So two years ago, in 2016, Town Council approved um, funding for the design of this five feet wide sidewalk. Located north of New Hill Road, between the Holly Springs Shopping Center and roughly um, so the neighborhoods in the um, west, we have the Hensley Subdivision, 12 Oak Subdivision, and following that approval, the um, engineering department contracted with Underfoot Engineering to provide civil engineering services related to this project. Now you're gonna ask, why has it been two years that we're still here and talking about this? Well, why is that? Because. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also paid to be a shill. What? Not much though. What happened, well, initially we would, the purpose of this project was to provide um, residents access to the shopping center and vice versa. So we had um, neighborhoods in the west and the shopping center and downtown in the east. So this was, this was to be desired to have a connection <coughs> between that and what's shown in red is the existing or soon to be existing and green was the proposed. Well, back two years ago, we were looking at a much longer sidewalk section, roughly about double the length as what we see tonight. In the meantime, the Hensley subdivision came in and added another phase, which eliminated, I hope this is correct, this stretch, and um, also, on top of that, a school, Saley School, came in and um, went ahead and um, started the design for this tract. Well, for, for us, um, it was not feasible to construct a sidewalk which would, in turn, then be demolished and reconstructed by a development. So it, for us, it was really, it paid out to, to wait, but th that was also time that we had to wait. So we, we, we waited till um, we knew that these sections or the developer was committed to do this. Same applied for the school, plus there was a pump station um, that will be removed. So all this, um, 
triggered design changes and pretty much for us to say, let's wait. And what is remaining of our, I think it was 1,600 linear foot sidewalk are the 800 linear feet that you can see here in green. And for these 800 linear feet, we would like to propose um, to approve funding for easement right purchases, which pretty much we are not buying these properties. We're just going to um, purchase the right to encroach or to to build the sidewalk along um, the north side of New Hill Road. Any additional questions or comments? And these are from street reserves, right? Yes, sir. That was 15,000, was it? Yes, sir. Yeah. Questions or comments? Sounds easy to me. Yep. You good? Oh, yeah. I need to. Okay. <laughs> oh. Oops, sorry. There you go. Motion. I'll do it. Motion to approve additional funding in the amount of $15,000 for easement right purchases along New Hill Road in preparation for the sidewalk construction. Second. second. Motion been made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passed unanimously. Thank you, Dirk. Thank, Thank you. you. Set. Okay, moving on. Uh, other business. Crosswalk safety continues to be one of the majors. Uh, Kendra, any news? Anything going on that we should know about on crosswalks? I didn't forewarn you on this one. Monday of next week? This week? Oh, I got it. I, you caught me on that one. I thought, wait a minute, this is Tuesday. <laughs> Push if you can. It's been too hot. Nobody wants to get out there. It has been probably too hot right now. <laughs> exactly. Okay. All right. Thank you. Crosswalk safety, of course. Speeding is still on the agenda. And um, I did notice that the police are doing a um, crosswalk safety campaign now, which I think is terrific. And Mike Morris is uh, the administrative services manager. And if anybody wants to know more, uh, just go to Watch For Me NC. Right, Christine? Quante? Mm -hmm. Say yes. You're a good girl, <laughs> too. <laughs> All right. Uh, others? But I have a few things. <clears throat> I want to congratulate all the graduates across the different schools and our high schools in the area, um, Holly Springs High School, Middle Creek, and especially Apex Friendship. We have families there, the first graduation class. So I think that's fabulous. I also want to point out that um, there is a Martin Luther King Jr. Committee picnic on July 14th happening down at Wobble Park. It's a free community event. Um, food will be served from 11 to 1. We will have a bounce house. Um, it's a great organization that does a lot around town. And they will have free health clinics because Rex will be there and Wake Med will be there and Dr. Vita will be there. So um, I'm excited and hopefully folks will come out. And we're working hard. Um, Pam Womble's quite involved with that organization, so we're doing all we can to make sure that's a huge success again this year. And last, thank you all for the, um, the detour around Avid Ferry. It seemed to have gone really well. Um, I think the town did a great job letting people know that it was happening. I, I don't see any issues, so unless you guys have heard, it seems like that's gone well. Very few, if any. Yeah, it's a big change. So thank you. Yeah. That's it for me. Good, thank you. What else? Uh, just two things for me. Congratulations to uh, all of our Holly Springs Fire Department personnel that were promoted uh, last week. The chief yep. announced those promotions effective July 1st. Uh, so congrats to, to everyone there who got, got promoted. And thanks for their continued service. I think, Chief, you've done a great job getting a, a good structure in place for the department, filling a lot of your line officer ranks and junior officers. Uh, so solid work there. And the police department's done a lot of that, too, with um, 
captains and, and the different supervisors that have been put in place. They, six months ago, I think they had some movement over there as well. So glad to see both of our public safety agencies uh, moving individuals around and, and promoting those that are doing an, an excellent job. Uh, secondly, um, to the Public Works Department, they had a rough week, a uh, week and a half or so ago, uh, with their leaf trucks, all four of them were down, so thanks to Luncey and his, and his crew for staying on top of that. I think we've, last I heard, got two trucks back up and running, but in the interim we had our uh, towable units and some good old-fashioned manual labor going on there to try and keep up with the needs yeah. in the town, so extra thank you to you guys for uh, persevering and getting through that the last couple weeks. Um, let's see, I just had a couple of quick things. Uh, one announcement that we did get, uh, Holly Grove Middle School principal, Ken Prue, who's been oh, there yeah. since the start, I think it's eight years now, yeah. um, will be leaving to become principal at East Chapel Hill High School. So, uh, he's done a great job over there and we will miss him. Uh, also I wanted to, um, see if we could, could someone grab Chief uh, Herring out there for a minute? I had, I wanted him to come up and talk about Hey, recall, yeah. recall. See, if you just want to put you on the spot, could you just give a quick reminder about fireworks, how, what's allowed and not allowed in Holly Springs, since we have that coming up in a couple weeks? How does the noise ordinance now? <laughs> yeah, <really. laughs> I've got to change gears now. Yeah. Um, You'll have to so, have a helicopter. So, so really, the, the, I think the simplest way to put it is that anything that explodes is illegal in the state of North Carolina. So the sparklers you can use, but but anything that it, that you light and explodes, and or um, any projectile, so the, the the rockets and those kind of things are illegal. And I think there probably are some fire concerns too. Um, <laughs> you know, especially the the, 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 the ones that oh, yeah. you know, the oh, projectiles. Yeah. Uh, landing on top of a house, it could start a, it could start a fire. It could, it it could you know, pine straw, very flammable. I, it, yeah, it's it's tough because I know you'll you'll get lots of calls and people complain that the police didn't do anything, but it's often way after the fact, you know. Um, and you can't be in every neighborhood on July Fourth night. But I think if we get the information out there, um, nine people, the best we can, it will help. Right. I mean, yes, given our staffing levels, you can imagine um, on the 4th of July how difficult that would be to, yeah, sure. to, for us to ride around and monitor that. So you're exactly right. I think whenever we become aware of it, it's because someone else is complaining about it because they, they're, they're, they're trying to go to bed and someone's you know, setting off fireworks next door. But by the time that we get there, then the violators are gone. Yeah. Uh, in most cases, they are. Uh, and in some cases, they're... Um, you know, I mean, historically, they've been too young for us to, to really even charge. So, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's, there's other things that we can do as far as holding the parents accountable, but um, there's some challenges with it for sure. Okay. okay. Thank you. Just wanted to remind everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Hi, Dick. Sherry. Well, yeah. Sherry. I just want to extend, I guess, our thanks to Erica and Marie and the rest of or anybody who's been involved in this town manager search process. It's been a lot of work, a lot of time, and mm -hmm. I've heard nothing but just positive feedback from everybody, whether it's the you know, candidates or assessors or uh, the, the recruiting firm, uh, developmental mm -hmm. associates. Um, it, you know, it's been a lot of work for everybody, and, yeah. and they've made it a great very, job. very smooth. So, and Anne Marie, too, of course. Yeah. And one last thing, or actually sure. two things. I got one. Uh, okay. Go uh, I want to thank Kendra, and I want to thank Luncie for uh, helping out uh, fix that hole that's uh, located uh, between the Mims and the church there. Uh, Pastor, Pastor John was excited, and Fabulous. Um, we know you're busy, and uh, they really appreciate that. That's right. um, the other thing, uh, I do want to thank Erica Phillips, uh, who has helped uh, not only with the town manager, but uh, some of the things that we've asked for. Um, specifically uh, town attorney reviews <coughs> and, and town clerk reviews. Uh, she's provided documentation to all of us uh, in the last 30 days or so. Um, and I think uh, it'd be a good idea if we could uh, address the reviews by maybe next meeting, after next meeting, as uh, we're trying to, uh, you know, uh, find a new town manager. And I think this would help him 
um, as he or she uh, becomes new town manager. So I don't know what your thoughts are. Maybe next town meeting we kind of knock that out in July. So I don't know. That's something of interest. I concur. Echo did a great job. I didn't even have any comments on what you provided. So um, I, I think that makes sense to do that. What do you think? It's fine. Leo? We don't we don't meet July third. So no, no. Seventeen. Yeah. Closed session after the. Yeah. Seventeen. Okay. Good. What else? I, I do have one more thing. I forgot. Um, tonight you'll notice that in, in the agenda packet there was a name called Elizabeth Goodson. You didn't see her tonight. Now there is a reason. This was her last day. And she is now going to the town of Pittsburgh in the engineering department there and we wish her the very best. She was terrific for this town and I think we all feel that way. There were several parties, um, presence, good wishes, the whole nine yards. So Elizabeth, if you're listening and watching, God bless you. <laughs> she's not. We'll <laughs> of course she's not. <laughs> That's it? All right, manager's report. Uh, all of my items have been taken, um, so I have nothing to report. Danny, you can talk about <laughs> July 5th. July 5th, I kept okay. that one for you. July, July 5th, and I will uh, tell you what, I'll put Adam Huffman, Interim Director of Parks and Rec, on the spot and see if there's anything we can, uh, any, anything new we can expect for this year. Sure. So, Adam? Okay. Hey Adam, excuse me. Why don't you come up to the mic and make a presentation? Because some people here can't even hear you, and people out there can't, I'm sure. You don't have to introduce yourself. We all know who you are. Better known as Shorty. Okay, so we have a pair, we have a Troopers coming down. We have uh, two sets. We have a six o'clock uh, jump, and then we have a, about a nine nine fifteen jump. Super. So they'll come down right before the fireworks go off, about nine fifteen nine thirty. Um, this year, in case we have bad weather, we're going to reach out and give people the opportunity to either uh, check our website. I'll be with Mark Andrews or Tam Reward. They're going to be right beside me to make sure that we get all that information out. So in the years past, we've had a lot of bad weather. So people be up to date on what's going on. So uh, that's really the big news for this year. Um, same vendors, bounce houses, all those fun stuff. Adam, fun would you be able to do um, a, like a text alert, like a notification with the weather? We're gonna put something out in the newsletter, the water bill, so everyone will know where to go. We've talked with Mark Andrews. It's either gonna be on the website or text alert, depending on what you're signed up for, but we're gonna make sure that when you come in this year, we'll have something at the gate to tell you the most accurate and the most up-to-date way to stay informed. So and, and also ex maybe explain what happens. You, you told us at the Parks and Rec Committee meeting um, that once the, the fireworks are locked and loaded, you're setting them off no matter what. Yeah, we cannot you know, disembark and put them back in the truck you know, if it's bad weather. So at some point in time throughout the night, we're going to have to launch them. <laughs> well, this is a ordinance now. That's annoying. Well, <laughs> special exemption for that uh, event. Uh, but yes, we do have to launch. So you know, if we have to wait till 10, 11, we're going to launch them that night at some point. So um, Chief will put his little Vanna White re meter reader out. <laughs> Um, and he won't, he won't I know talk. a good attorney. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. um, other questions? That's good. Thank you. Look forward to it. Thank good you. Stuff. We look forward to being there too. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Counselor? Yes, sir. Um, the Economic Development Director would like to address you on some economic development recruitment efforts pursuant to uh, ch Chapter uh, 143.318.11A4. And uh, you could make a motion to go in pursuant to that section to executive session. Your motion. Motion for closed session pursuant to that general statute. Second. Motion been made. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Opposed. Good night, everybody. Stay Thank cool. You, Thanks for coming.